So you are thinking about starting an awesome autonomous navigation project, but you're unsure where to begin and your budget doesn't even allow for a fancy new camera or a LiDAR sensor. Meanwhile, all these cool research papers and YouTube demo videos show off amazing autonomous navigation algorithms, but never explain how they started it. I've been there. I even invested a stereo camera, inertia sensors, and RTK GPS. But the data quality was disappointing. I ended up with spending weeks just trying to collect the data and then couldn't even get started on the project. In this video, I want to introduce you a fantastic data set, the KITTI data set, or I just call it Kitty data set, and it is free. It's one of the most widely cited data set in the autonomous navigation research field. And if you read any research papers on the autonomous navigation, chances are they've just used this benchmark data set to evaluate their algorithms. So for anyone new to the field of autonomous navigation, understanding the Kitty dataset is fundamental. It's just basics of the basic. So don't let yourself fall behind. And if you are looking to kickstart your autonomous navigation project, watch this till the end. I will guide you through where to find it, how to download it, and how to integrate into your Python project. Are you ready? Let's dive in. Oh, and if this is the first time here, my name is Elliot. I'm a robotics engineer and educator passionate about helping people get into robotics engineering deeper and deeper. So to begin with, um, I kind of lied to you because this KI DTI dataset isn't just for autonomous navigation. Instead, it's for the research of computer vision, robotics, and artificial intelligence in general. So anyone interested in all these cool topics, you can just start from here. And the name KI DTI stands for let me see if I can pronounce this. Karlsruhe Institute of Technology. My apologies if I can't pronounce it properly. And I think this is one of the universities in Germany. And then together with Toyota Technological Institute at Chicago. So they kind of worked on this project together, I believe. So they named it as KIT and TI. So I, I just call it Kitty Dataset because it sounds cute and easier. So this Kitty dataset is founded by these people. I put the link in the description section so you can also navigate to this website. And then the, one of the best things I like about this dataset is they are not only high quality, but also they actually collect the data with expensive GPS and then a LiDAR sensor like this, Velodyne LiDAR a scanner like this is like, I'm pretty sure it's several grand. So I cannot even afford it, but I can still use the dataset from this community, so which is very good. Also, when it comes to cameras, they have two left and right images and then two color images. So they actually have four different cameras on top of this car roof. So this is really for anyone looking for any project related to perception, mapping, localization and navigation and so on, object detection, you name it. So they have collected all these data like this. So if you're looking for object tracking, you can download this kind of data set and then tracking as well like this. You can also segment the scene by the object or by the buildings and so on. And today, let's look at the dometry data first because I believe this is one of the not straightforward data set. So I want to explain how you can actually download it and then set up for your Python project. So first things first, to begin the download, you can actually just download it. You need to actually log in here in the right top there. Then go down and if you don't have any account here, just click the register here button. And then they ask for your first last name and organization, your homepage or GitHub, whatever, and then your email address and password. And they also ask for a couple of sentences why you need this data set. And this is really a casual question. So feel free to type in the reason why you need this data set. I want to start a project in autonomous navigation and so on. And then if you are just individual, just type individual and that's really fine. And then I understand they are asking quite a bit of information, but given this quality of data set is free, I think this is a fair game. And then once you make the account, you can come back here and then log in with your email and the new password. Now, once you have signed in here, you can now start download. And then the next grandiose step to do is just click one of these links. And then I recommend that you download the grayscale images, which is 22 gigabytes. It will take a couple of hours. And then also download this calibration files and the ground truth poses. And these two files are pretty small, so it will take just a couple of seconds. So given this size of the data, I think a couple of hours are pretty fair game. 
About 7 8 years ago when I tried to download all these it took several days and their server was really bad and that if it disconnects in the middle, middle of the download I had to start over so compared to that I think nowadays their server is upgraded so I think it's pretty good. Also I recommend if you have enough space on your SSD you can also download Velodyne laser data which is 80 gigabytes. Now while you are downloading it let me talk about KITTI data set a little bit. So I just got these images from this home page actually and then if you go to home page then go to setup they have actually put all this information about their sensor setup so as you can see they have one two three four cameras and one of them is color camera another camera is gray camera and then cam one again is gray cam three is color so they have two grayscale cameras and then three uh, RGB cameras like this and they have GPS and IMU and they have this uh, LiDAR sensor like that so that's their sensors. Next for the structure and this is kind of a very important setup on your site so once you unzip it after downloading it and then you put KITTI data set folder like this and then underneath there will be a dimetry folder like this in this dome this folder is coming from the zip file and then uh, you put all this data set like this under the data set and there is poses and sequences and then the zero zero images and zero one images and so on and what do i mean by that i'll show you soon and also there are images zero one two three and that's because there are four cameras so each camera will collect all these images into a corresponding folders like that and then also there is a Velodyne LiDAR sensor data is underneath this folder. So let me show you the actual folder structure here. So I'm under this deep learning data set and I have created KITTI data set and underneath there I'm not sure if you can see this there is ODOM folder there if I double click it and there is data set and then dev kit. Dev kit is for now it's not that important and if you get into data set and there are two folders and then if I look at the sequences there are like two sequences because we are starting from zero and then if I look at the zero zero here there are four different color image folders I mean two grayscale images and two color images and the image zero is grayscale left hand side camera and the image one is the right hand side camera for the grayscale camera so if I actually get in uh, image is zero then let's look at this first image like this then if i press the right arrow it's kind of like a video play and then if i compare zero zero from this folder image zero then if i go back to image one i'll click zero zero again and then this is the right hand side camera and this is left eye of the stereo camera so if i compare left and right images like this so this is right this is left so if i actually look at this pole location of this image pixel location this right hand side camera the right eye sees a more space on the right hand side because it's on the right side compared to the left hand side like this and then same for the left images so if i look at this tree the left camera can capture this tree uh, trunk like this but the right hand side camera couldn't even catch the tree so that's the difference left and right hand side camera for the color images compare these by yourself if i go to Voldine, there are also a bunch of binary files like this 0000123 four, and so on and it means at the very moment like 000 like this image which is also zero when this image is taken at that very moment the LiDAR collected all these point cloud data and then saved into this file. Now let's go back up a little bit. Then there are a bunch of sequences like this and they are all different 22 different paths of this car driving around. And then underneath the data set order again there is poses and then this is the ground truth poses from 00 to 10 and they don't have the ground truth data from 11 to 20 and that's why you want to use all this ground truth data and then develop your algorithm and then test with the rest of the data sets like this so if you open up uh, left and right images with the color images it looks like this and at the very moment if you plot the point cloud it's going to be looking like this so uh, i'm not sure if you can notice but here is a bunch of 
point cloud like this and it's this car there and then there is also car looking point cloud like that and that must be this car then there is also another car looking like point cloud which is this car like that so that's how these images and point cloud the i mean the radar sensor data correspond with each other now there are four cameras so we need to talk about the four camera parameter matrix and the camera parameter matrix is this three by four matrix like this that can map from this 3d real world coordinate into the image coordinate like this and then they come with something like p0123 which is four and then each line is composed of 12 columns and then if you just reshape it into three by four matrix like this you can actually recover all these camera parameter matrix like this and then the problem is the ground truth data ground truth data is not really in xyz vision of the car instead it comes with this transformation matrix so it contains the information of the rotation as well as this XYZ information of the position. And again, each line is composed of, I believe, 12 columns. And then this is three by four matrix like this. Actually, this is a four by four, but the last row of this matrix is always 0001. So it's kind of trivial. So if you can, if you can just reshape all these one by 12 into three by four, and then put all this into four by four matrix like this, you're gonna end up with this three by three rotation matrix and then T one, two, three, which is actual position X, Y, and Z. So if you only take this part for the position X, Y, and Z, and you're gonna end up with a uh, route of this car. Just in case if you forget the car, I mean this car. So to wrap up, here's the ground truth data reading Python script. And then I just define all these F to the file like this. And like I said, I just reshape all these one by 12 into three by four. And then there are n number of data points because for each route is one point. What I mean by it, let me just run this. And then each point of data in this ground truth is like this. Each point is like that. And that point is composed of one by 12 columns. And that's why I just reshape like this for each point. And then you can just take the last column like this and then you can get xyz information of your car also there is a times data you can also read it as well and then this is xyz versus a time graph like this also you can do the same for this camera calibration file like this and that will print out all these four camera parameters like this as well and then reading images is kind of trivial as long as you have experience with CV like this you can just simply read the left and right images like this and when it comes to lidar data reading that's just going to be like this and then you can just read this binary file using numpy like this now if you just run this script it's going to be like that now let me zoom this in a little bit like that then you can see all these point cloud for each car like this one two three about four each cars are captured here so that's your lidar data set and I'll put the link in the description section for this code here so do not worry about it and they are all standalone Python scripts so all you need is numpy and matplotlib and opencv so if you are just starting out this autonomous navigation project don't let the data collection hold you back like it did for me i spent time and money collecting data but quality wasn't that great i was not satisfied so the data collection for autonomous navigation isn't just about having the right equipment. It also demands experience and expertise to ensure that data is uh, usable. Without that, it is easy to get stuck in the process even before you begin with working on the actual project. That's why I recommend starting with the KITTI dataset. It's not just another dataset, it's trusted for evaluating algorithms and benchmarking performance. With the KITTI dataset, you are working with high quality and well-structured data that's been cited countless research papers. It really allows you to skip the hurdles of the data collection and jump straight into the building and the testing your ideas. So I hope this video saves you time and helps you get your project get going faster. So please, if you found this content helpful, please give it a like and subscribe my channel. My name is Elliot and I'll see you around.